how your own thinking has changed, how your own knowledge has changed. I mean, I cannot say much about thought because I don't have much thought. <laughs> this may be… this may sound like an oxymoron for people, but the fact of the matter is, most of the time I don't have any thought in me. For me, the phenomena of life that's happening within me always overwhelms everything else. Thought occurs to me only when I want to physically do something, arrange something around me. Otherwise, days on end will pass for me without a single thought. So, maybe I never grew up <laughs> In a way, yes, because when it comes to… people ask me, what has been your sadhana? My only sadhana has been that uh, right from my childhood, I never got identified with anything. Either the family or the culture or the religion or the society or various other things happening around you, including your parentage, your siblings. I was involved with them but never identified with anything. If human intelligence does not tie itself down with identity, every human being will realize the nature of life. Human intelligence is capable of figuring this. When I say intelligence, as Deepak pointed out, it's beyond the thought process. Unfortunately, because of the type of education systems we have today, we are completely committed to one dimension of our intelligence which we call as the intellect, which is just the thought process. Thought can only happen with the data that you have gathered through five senses, which is very limited, one thing. Another thing is, the nature of data that the senses gather are only useful for survival process. The very nature of how you see things, how you hear, smell and taste and touch life is only relevant for survival process. If you wanting to know the life itself, then these instruments of perception are no good. Even what is light and darkness is a debate between you and another creature which sees darkness as light, isn't it? If you sit with an owl, uh, an owl and start an argument as to which is light and which is darkness, it's an endless argument, but who do you think is right? Hello? Uh, if you're saying both, you are either in the diplomatic corps <laughs> or… or you have a successful marriage <laughs> you, <laughs> you have learned to say both, both but which is the truth? What I see is the truth or what the owl sees is the truth? That's not the point, it is just that nature has opened up our sense perception as it is necessary for our survival. Accordingly, it has opened up sense perceptions for different creatures as it is necessary for their survival. But if survival is all you're seeking, this is good enough, the five senses. But once you have come as a human being, somehow survival is not good enough. If your stomach is empty, there's only one issue about food. But once the stomach becomes full, you have a hundred issues going on. <laughs> so the nature of the human being is such, no matter what you do, you want to be something more than what you are right now. And if that something more ha happens, something more, something more, it's an endless pursuit. So somewhere, a human being is seeking a limitless expansion but trying to do it with physical means. The very nature of physicality is a defined boundary. If there is no defined boundary, there is no possibility of physical happening in the universe. But now, a human being is longing for the boundless, that too in installments <laughs> and through physical means. Through the boundary, you're trying to become boundless. The desire is fantastic, the method is hopeless <laughs> because the moment you identify yourself with something, your intellect's work is just to protect that identity. 
If you… whatever the identities of nation or family or gender or race, religion, whatever, the moment you identify yourself with something, your intellect will only function around that to protect that. So, it is a certain type of prejudice the moment you're identified. So, the only thing I did with my life is, I never identified myself with anything and life just exploded within me in ways that thought seems so puny that I do not indulge in thought most of the time. You know, what you're saying, for all of us here, in some way, shape or form, we all pride ourselves on thinking human beings. This is… this Think, is a tough thing to swallow. Thinking is just swallow. recycling of the data that you already gathered <laughs> So, what is… what is the leap of faith that you go from this… from this perspective of thinking and thoughts to we don't belong to anyone, you know, we… we, we are not identified with… with any instrument, with… with… with any sort of localness. And, See, and I know both of you have spoken the, about that. The thing is, this is not something that people will not get. They will get this. This is not some great teaching I'm telling you. If you get it right now in your life, your life will transform in ways that you can't imagine possible. Otherwise, someday you will get it from the maggots. You will understand you don't belong to anything <laughs> So, you are the entire culture of what is… what you're calling as Bharat is about Vairag. The word Vairag means… Rag means color, Vairag means beyond color. But if you say colorless in English language, it is a very negative connotation of being colorless. Let's put it as transparent. Because it's transparent, it… it can take on the color of anything right now. Right now, if my background is red, I am red. If it's yellow, I am yellow. I am taking the… picking the colors from you, okay? Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Well, blue and gold aren't bad either <laughs> so, A modern scientist is trying to deduce, mathematically deduce the reality. Everything has to fit in to his math and he will deduct everything and say the entire universe is one. But it's not in his experience. A religious person will say, God is everywhere, so everything is one. But it's not yet in his experience, he believes. One is deducting… With the, making deductions, another is believing. A yogi is a hard nut who doesn't believe anything, who doesn't want to deduce anything. Unless it becomes real within him, it's not real for him. So, because of this approach, I… I never found the need to read anything spiritual. If I read something, it may be a news magazine or literature or something else, but never anything spiritual because I never wanted to clutter my own clarity with anything outside. And the only thing, the only and only thing I know is, I know this piece of life from its origin to its ultimate and that's all. Because you know this piece of life, by inference, you seem to know everything else. Today there is a, a certain theory uh, coming out which is called as a constructional theory. What they are trying to say is, whether you take an amoeba or a human being, whether you take the atomic or the cosmic, the fundamental design is same. It is just the sophistication and the complexity is multiplying. So, if the fundamental design is same, if you want to know the entire universe, you just have to know this. And this is the only thing that's available to you, accessible to you. When I say this is the only thing available and accessible to you, see right now you believe that you can see me sitting here, but that's not the fact of the matter. The fact is, light is falling upon me, reflecting, going through your lenses, inverted image in the retina, you know the entire story. So if you see me, you see me only within you. If you hear me, you hear me only within you. Whatever ever happened to you, light and darkness happens within you, pain and pleasure happens within you, joy and misery happens within you, agony and ecstasy happens within you. Right now if I touch your hand, you think you're experiencing my hand. No, you're only experiencing the sensations in your hand. Or in other words, the entire human experience is happening within you. The very seat of your experience is within you. 
what is happening within you, at least you must be able to determine. What is happening within you must happen the way you want it. If what happens within you happens the way you want it, suddenly your ability to create what you want to happen in the world also is tremendously enhanced. Not because you know the world, because you know this. This is why realization as… was held as the biggest thing, you must understand it's realization. It's not an achievement, it is not an attainment, it's a realization. Realization means it's always there. I was stupid enough not to see it, suddenly one day I saw it. That's what realization means. Never we said any inner things are accomplishments or achievements, they are not any kind of peak climbing. It's just a realization, it's always been there. It has always been there to see. So everybody is quoting Gita, let me also quote. <laughs> At some point it seems Arjuna asked, I don't know, it's been whether made up by somebody, it's really in Gita, please correct me if it is so. It seems Arjuna asked that, where is this truth that you're talking about? This un intangible, unperceivable truth, where is it? It seems Krishna laughed and said, it's at the tip of your nose. Now there are many schools of yoga which are intensely focusing on the tips of their noses and getting headache. <laughs> Try and see <laughs> what… what he is trying to say is, it is the most obvious thing. The most obvious thing, if you pay attention to your existence, not to your thought, not to your emotion, not to the arrangements of life that you have made around you. If you pay attention to the nature of your existence, it is the most obvious thing. It's at the tip of your nose is a metaphor in India that it is the most obvious thing. But by focusing on the tip of the nose, enlightenment will not happen, headache is guaranteed. <laughs> you obviously cannot access it with thought process because Thought is an accumulation, accumulated information which you're recycling according to your convenience. Right now our ideas of who we are or what I am and what I am not is determined by this. If you just do this simple experiment right now, take your right hand and touch your left hand please all of you, can you do this? Is that you? Is that you? Yes. Just touch the chair on which you're sitting, is that you? Oh, who's this? But it is. <laughs> you own the… F <laughs> it is. <laughs> now, in your experience, this is me and this is not me. The basis of this experience is coming from this. Where there is a sensation, you think it's me. Where there is no sensation, you think it's not me. Right now, the water in the glass is not you, but if you consume it, it becomes you. And these whatever number of kilograms you carry right now, all this was all over the planet and today it's me. The air that you breathe, what is not you is becoming you. The food on your table, what is not you is becoming you right now. This moment, what is not you, in a couple of hours it becomes you. So your experience of myself is basically the boundaries of your sensation. The nature of the boundaries of sensation are such, if you allow your life energies to be in a certain level of exuberance, you will see the boundaries of your sensation will expand. You can just know this just by rubbing your hands and holding it like this, you will see something begins to happen between your hands, there are sensations transmitting between the two hands. Or if you have been very joyful or ecstatic at a certain moment, you will see sensations seem to be all over the place. If you create a certain system within you where your life energies are kept in a certain level of exuberance, then the sensory body will expand. If the sensory body, let us say, became as big as this hall, then you will experience everything in this hall and everybody in this hall as a part of yourself, like you experience the five fingers of your hand as yourself right now. So what is referred to as yoga is, the word yoga means union. That means you experience the entire universe as yourself. This is happening because you are in a such a state of you have found a mechanism by working with the body, by working with the mind, by working with the emotion and energy, you have set up a step-by-step -step system within yourself where your energies are kept at such a level of exuberance 
that your sensory body is as large as the universe. So if you sit here, you experience the entire universe as myself. Once you experience everybody around you as yourself, then I don't have to tell you, don't kill this person, don't rob that person, don't harm this… all morality will be useless for you because you have experienced everything as myself. You don't have to try to be good, your goodness is a consequence, your goodness is not an effort. What? Guru? The experience has not become widespread because there is no infrastructure, neither physical infrastructure nor human infrastructure. For example, in this country hundred and fifty years ago, they tell me over ninety-four percent of the people were illiterate. Today, hundred percent literacy, how does it happen? Because they have somebody built the schoolroom, somebody trained the teachers. That infrastructure for inner experience has been wiped out through in the last few centuries. So how do you expect it to happen? One guy talking here, one guy talking there is not going to make it happen. What should be a part of our life from the day we start? Because the nature of human intelligence is such that if you don't mess it up with belief systems, every human being will find it. Too many concepts, too many ideas, too many belief systems, human intelligence is corrupt from the beginning. If you do not corrupt human intelligence, just leave it, every human being is capable of knowing this. It is not some superhuman thing. The most important thing to remain is… remember is this yoga, this spiritual process is not about becoming superhuman. It is about knowing that being human itself is super. <laughs> if you can be blissed out no matter what's happening around you, if you can be involved, and still not be affected by what's happening around you, not by removing yourself. You're absolutely involved but untouched by the process of life. I think that's success. The quality of your relationship largely decides the quality of your life. Is that so? Hmm? The quality of relationships that you hold in your life largely decides the very quality of life that you live. Good deal or bad deal is not the point. The point is, is this life serving the purpose? It's human memory which is the source of all bondage. What you call as karma is just memory on different levels of life. Don't believe anything that is not yet your experience, it doesn't matter who says it. This does not mean disbelief, no, you don't know, that's all. Somebody tells you a story, 